one lap one, you have to be patient. With a quality field like this, you hope they'll make it through turn one, but we can't promise anything. This Lucas Lohr and Scott Dixon across the front row as they head for one. The race cannot be won in turn one, lap one, but watch how many guys might lose it here. <laughs> Look how many of them might try. Where's well, somebody going down the outside now? And that's just the upper half of the field, the Daytona prototypes. This is a two-class race. The GTs are coming on a start of their own. When you, look, when you look at this incredible field of DP cars, I mean, this is a whole race in itself, really. 30 cars out there. Lucas Law takes the lead through the International Horseshoe. Scott Dixon right behind him. Dixon is driving for Chip Ganassi, and one of his teammates is with Calvin Fish. Indeed, there's the Indy 500 champ, RRL champ, Dan Weldon. Dan, that number 23 car has really been the rabbit all week long. What is the strategy? Do you try and stay with him, or is it a 24-hour race? He just pays his bills. Well, the, the target car has been very, very consistent over over a long run, and uh, that's you know that's what we intend to do. We can only control what we can do, and we're going to try and just do the best we can and make uh, as few mistakes as we possibly can. But all three of us um, seem to be able to run quick, comfortably, um, and you know this race is about staying out of trouble, so that's what we're trying to do. We're going to try and keep Chip happy. <laughs> With the two car effort under the tent, do you split strategies at all, or do you do your own thing? Well, I, th I think you obviously you don't. You, you just got to help each other as much as you possibly can because this is a big race that Chip wants to win, and I mean that's that's what we're going to have to do. But certainly the cars, like I say, we the, the Porsche seems very fast in, in a straight line, but um, we we believe that we, we're consistent and handle well, so we'll we'll just try and control our own destiny rather than worry about other people's. All right, mate. Good luck. Thank you. I think one of the strong points this car's got, the O2 car and the 23, the current leader is the fact that there is only three of them driving, which personally I think is a better grouping than having four drivers. Every time you get that extra body in the car, there's always the possibility of more mistakes, there's more pit stops and more driver changes. I think three is a good team, and they're a good team, this two. Just like the driver lined up in the 44th running of the Rolex 24 at Daytona, the history of victory lane at this great race is an absolute who's who of motorsport. And as that car exit pit lane, the O2 comes in, and this has had a very strong run since some problems earlier on, Chris. Top five at the moment. That's right, Lee. These guys are trying to bounce back. They had those brake issues earlier, and I think they've got that sorted out right now. Casey Mears just jumping out of this machine, passing it over to our IRL champion and Indy 500 champion from last year, uh, Dan Weldon getting in. So this team trying to bounce back, but right now running the top five, pretty uh, routine stop for these guys, just tires and fuel. And Lee and I were talking about Casey Mears and the job he was doing, really doing a fine job behind the wheel of this car. I can't remember if Chris said it earlier or not, but all these guys triple stinting. Dan Weldon, if you missed the news on any of the websites, the IRL IndyCar series, it was a test several days ago in Phoenix, and the Ganassi boys were one and two. Weldon was fastest, Scott Dixon was second fastest, and boy, are they optimistic about their chances in season 2006. But for now, they're focused on this race, and this is Dan Weldon's first stint of the day. This is a stint I like right here, going into the darkness. Well, the sun's no longer an issue. It's no longer in your face. There's still enough light where the lights don't take effect yet here at Daytona. And things are cooling down. We'll be back. For the fourth consecutive year, we will not have, we will have a different winner. There has never been a repeat winner in Daytona prototypes since they started. And look at Dan Weldon flashing the lights. He is on a mission. The 0-2 target Chip Ganassi, Lexus Riley, trying to get its lap back. Weldon is hunting down this man, Darren Law, because it is so close. 
to getting back on the lead lap, and that car is strong. The drivers have been smart. Just before we came on the air, we had the four leading cars on the same lap. Right now, Dan Weldon, the Indy 500 and IRL IndyCar champion at the wheel of the Target car from Chip Ganassi Racing with Phila Sabatis, is out front. And a little over a minute behind him is that Cheever Fittipaldi Carpentier car while the third place, number 60, is sitting in the pits now more than a lap down. So things are changing quickly, and we've got an awful long way to go. Of course, this is a two-class race, not just the Daytona prototypes, but an even bigger class of GT cards. We'll update you on their situation in just a moment. There is the 39. Now the race leader. There's Dan Weldon. I believe Calvin's there. Dan, great stint. You took the car to the front. Now some kind of gearbox issue, it seems. Um, I'm not... Well, we, I think we've got an alternator issue and a gearbox issue, so they're just going to try and uh, fix that. They're going to do the brakes as well while uh, we can. But uh, the car, the car's very quick. Even with those troubles, you had to brake early, uh, certainly into one and into the bus stop and lose a lot of time. But you could still run consistent and, and, and pretty quick. So I'm sure when we fix these, we should, we should be quick. But obviously, we're going to be down for a bit. Was it ultimately the gearbox or the alternator issue that brought you to the garage? Well, we had to pit anyway, and it was a good time because it was yellow. So uh, I think we're just going to try and fix everything at once. How's the car running, mate? I mean, obviously a lot of competition out there, a lot of different combinations. How's the Lexus running tonight? Yeah, the car, the car's running. Uh, oh, the, the whole package is very good. There's no doubt about it. It's uh, just staying out of trouble, um, which I got into a little bit. Um, and, you know, not having to do stuff like this. But, you know, some of this stuff you have to do in a 24-hour race. we just got to make sure we, we do it as quick as we can. But you see, these boys are pretty quick. All right, mate. Best of luck. Now, let's not forget, this is a championship-winning team a couple of years ago in the Rolex Sports Car Series. It's been a long, hard night. Is it ever an easy night here at the Rolex 24? I don't think so. Let's update you with who is where. And it, when we left, when we farewelled you last night, it was the 0-2 target Chip Ganassi car in the lead. It is still that way, but there's a bigger story to tell. They haven't always been the front-running car, and this race is far, far from over. The 0-2 is in, the leader of the race. Casey Mears brought the machine in. Indy 500 champ Dan Weldon now behind the wheel. He said, man, this is a long race. He looked tired, he looked sleepy-eyed, but I'm sure he'll get fired up once he gets this Lexus back into the action. Tires have been done, as we mentioned earlier in the race, a lot longer to get the fuel in this year. Standardized fuel rig means it takes about 42 seconds. Service is done. Waiting for the OK. Dan Weldon hits the gear and he's away. And Dorsey, as you well know, when you're riding that wave of winning momentum, it's, it just seems to keep going. Weldon has got the mojo happening at the moment. The Indy 500 champion, the reigning IRL IndyCar Series champion. He went testing last week at Phoenix and was fastest. And now they lead this race. And this is only his second attempt at the Rolex 24. He's in the groove. Time for him to go out and fulfill his next duty. 20 down, four hours to go. And we're going to take you all the way to the checkered flag. All right, let's hear from another guy who could make some history today with Calvin Fish. Dan Weldon sits nervously on the pit wall, I assume. Dan, you got about 35, 40 minutes left when you jump out of the car and turn it over to Scott Dixon this morning. How did it feel? Well, it feels, I was just explaining to, to Max Pappas that it's, it's very difficult for me because I'm used to driving the Indy car and it, everything always feels good in the Indy car and I've never completed a, a 24 hour race. We were out pretty early last year, so. You know, you just got to make, that's probably the most conservative I've ever driven. I was uh, kind of uh, sensible in traffic, and I was just trying to be easy on the gearbox and stuff like that. But I have to give credit to everybody at Target Chip Ganassi Racing because these guys have made some changes in the, in, during the night that, that no other team could do as quick as. And that doesn't just go for the 02 crew, that goes for the 01 crew too. And then obviously, uh, you know, all my teammates, Casey Miz, Scott Dixon, uh, Luis Diaz, Max Pappas, and Scott Brewer. I mean, we've worked hard but like you say there's still 40 minutes to go so I've seen what's happened the last couple of years so I'm not going to get excited yet. Very special week for you you got your face engraved on the Borg Warner trophy I know that's a special moment for any driver and uh, this week a chance to put one of those Rolexes on your wrist. Uh, we'll, we'll see about that but yeah receiving the Borg Warner trophy was nice it's it's kind of crazy you win that race in May and you don't get the trophy till January so that's, that's kind of tough but 
Yeah, for me, what was what was very special and probably the most special, I made a very difficult decision over the winter to leave Andretti Green Racing, and I uh, signed for signed for Chip's team, and we we did a two-day test at, at Phoenix on Tuesday and Wednesday, and it, and it went superbly. Obviously, I'm carrying on my relationship with Honda, which is which is pretty special for me because they uh, helped me get my start in Indy cars. But Scott and I ended up first and second, and. You know, that's, that, that, that bodes well for the season. Although it's only a test, it really makes you look forward uh, to what we have ahead. But it's going to be difficult, don't get me wrong. Quick question, did they get the hairstyle straight on the trophy? Just about. I mean, I have so many different ones. They, 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 got, they got one, but I was, uh, I was a little tired, shall we say, after the 500 on the Monday when they took the picture for that. So uh, it was a good one, at least. That's the only guy who comes from the motorhome, and you can't tell whether he's been sleeping or not with his hair in the morning. <laughs> I wanted Dan to come to a charity dinner for us uh, up in Wisconsin in January and I rang him in December and I got put through, I patched through, I rang his cell phone here and I could hear an English telephone ring which is very different and then Dan answered the phone I'm talking away to this bloke and I suddenly realised it wasn't Dan, it was his brother. They all sound exactly the same at their <laughs> house in, uh, in Northamptonshire, he was there for Christmas. See if he wears Coming back to a good start for the 2006 season. Touch wood by the look of things. There's race leader passing class weight later. Normally the victory goes to series regulars as fortune would have it. But this year something different as Scott Dixon brings the car to the checkered flag along with Dan Weldon and Casey Mears. First victory at the Rolex 24 for Chip Ganassi Racing. And there's the boss. We try and get the Indy 500 champ. Danny Boy, what a year for you. A year ago, you came here for your first 24 hour, didn't go your way. Then you go on to win the Indy 500 of the IRL Championship. And now you're a Daytona 24 hour winner. How's it feel? Yeah, it's amazing. I got to thank everybody at uh, Target Chip Ganassi Racing because, uh, you know, to be honest, we, hit, we had some stuff through the night that they took care of. And uh, not, ju not just the O2 crew, the O1 crew, the whole team worked very hard for this. So uh, it's a fantastic achievement for everybody involved. This is uh, another, another good title to add to, uh, to the Indianapolis 500. So what a way to start your relationship with Chip. Yeah, and Scott. I mean, uh, we were very quick at the uh, IndyCar test uh, and now this. So uh, it's, uh, keep Chip happy for a while, I, I, I think. When does it all sink in, mate? I mean, I know you came over to the States as a rookie, you know, ran in Ford 2000, Atlantic, Indy Lights, trying to get your way to the top. You're certainly there right now. Would you have believed five years ago that you'd have the accomplishments under your belt at this stage of your career? No, and you have to give America credit for that because they have some unbelievable races. The Indianapolis 500, the Rolex 24-hour race, there, so the Daytona 500. They have great races and they have great fans. They have, uh, have a ton of people that come to all these races, and without them, we wouldn't be able to do any of this. So... Uh, you know, it's, it's all credit to them, too. Congratulations, mate. Dan Weldon, he certainly seems to have the magic touch right now, Bob. That he does. Kind of like Andy Wallace on the day. Just kind of gets out of bed in the morning and wins races. And congratulations also to Casey Mears, whose uncle Rick won the Indy 500, of course. Father Roger, a terrific racer. Now he has added his own personal page to the Mears family scrapbook. And who knows, he may do a Dan Weldon and in three weeks' time. He may be back in there again. Now, wouldn't the, that be a story? <laughs> now, that would be a story.